What is going on guys? It's your boy Sesso here, bringing you guys another video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop slash Cinema 4D tutorial here today, showing you guys to make your own underwater scene manipulation kind of thing going on. So someone in my last video, my last manipulation was like, yo, can we make an underwater scene? And I was like, you know, I kind of did one a while ago, it was maybe like, I don't know, like eight so months ago, where I did like an underwater scene and it was sort of like on a water line, like the ocean line. So I thought like, why not try again and see if we can do something like this this time? And yeah, I did something like this, so pretty much we start off with just a uh, basic sort of like underwater kind of scene thing going, and then we kind of made it into this. So there's a couple of stocks here, right? And then there's a couple like little foreground action going on with the background, like the blurred out uh, seaweed to your, you know, close, close perspective. And then the, I think the, what really made it was these little water droplets. I sort of just kind of thought, you know, like if you were in a scuba mask or something, and if you were scuba diving, you kind of always have like water maybe shimmering on. Maybe not, but it's kind of like, that's why I put it there. Then we have our hammerhead shark and our simple, very simple text here, right? And a couple lighting effects with a little coral on the bottom. And then that's pretty much how we did this. So not too hard whatsoever. Uh, I do apologize for not posting this on Friday. I'm, you know, one day or later, whoop, sorry. But I had a final that I had to study for and actually take. And it was like up until like 9. 9 30 p.m. so it was one of those kind of things biolab you know so anyway thank you guys so much for uh you know waiting so yeah uh don't forget 200 likes on the video because i see it down below but however it's a manipulation so can we go for that 300 likes i'm just i'm just saying dude i'm just saying um the stocks that i use well i'll try to put them in the description down below these are the ones that i use right here uh they're nothing besides google stocks i just typed in whatever the whatever i want and then png and uh yeah so uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started within cinema 4d and let's do it. So, mo graph, mo text, and we're gonna make this under, right? Change my alignment to the middle. And my font that I use, I believe, was long haul again. Where are ya? There she is. And I'm gonna make my depth, let's just say, I don't know, like 75. Yeah, sure, 75 is fun. And we're gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this again. Control C, Control V. And then I'm gonna make water for the one on the bottom. Take this and put it below here. Take both of them, move them up a little bit. And I pretty much what I did here was I'm gonna make my depth just a little bit, like 85, a little bit more. All right, so pretty much what I did as I simply, as you can see here, right? I simply just want, I rotated one to the left, rotated one to the right, and then sort of rotated it all to like a little slant. So it's not too hard of a concept whatsoever. So this is not something you're gonna struggle with in Cinema 4D. Um, <coughs> okay, so we're gonna take our under, we're gonna go here, and we're just gonna click and just move it to the left a little bit. Take our water, move it to the right a little bit, just like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and just sort of control click on both of these, right? I'm gonna take my rotation tool, I'm gonna rotate it just like so. Yep, there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control C, control V again. So I have two duplicates, right? So I have one, uh, two of the same exact underwater texts here. So what I'm gonna do is on these two new duplicates that we just made, so I'm gonna main this one and two or just two and two because they're the copies, right? So on these two copies here, I'm gonna go to my caps and I'm gonna start and change it to fill a cap for both of them. And we're just gonna simply change our radius to like three on the bottom and just keep your steps at one. And then what you're gonna do is gonna click on one of them one at a time, click on the move tool, click your blue arrow, which is the one kind of focusing on moving it uh, backwards and forwards. So pretty much you take your blue arrow, move it to your left, move your mouse to your left and just put it back just like that. Same thing with the under one, just like so. And then pretty much what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna quickly make a simple gray. That's good enough. And then we're gonna make under this color. That's not under, this one's under. Let's also make sure that the pro projection is on cubic, seamless. Um, there's under, and then we're gonna take water here. Boom, projection, cubic, seamless. And then just like so. So pretty much what we're gonna have here is if I quickly render it out for you guys, just so you can guys can see it really quickly, it's gonna have like a very cool little bevel right on the bottom, and it's just gonna look simple, really cool, really simple text, nothing hard whatsoever, nice reflection, all that good stuff. So when you go ahead and just render this thing out, uh, all you gotta do is save it as a PNG alpha channel, and we're gonna just change this to one, two, three, because why not? Output, uh, that's perfectly fine. And then if you guys want to uh, aim an inclusion, Global illumination and sharpen filter, just a little bit of it, five strength. If you guys want to copy these settings down right now, you guys can go ahead and do so. Um, otherwise, you can probably, I'm most likely, if you guys just ask me for the secret download, I'll probably put the secret download of like my Lightroom in there just in case you guys needed it. If you guys don't have one already, or already. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and render this thing out. I'm gonna throw this into Photoshop. Suits so, so like right, it's not so hard of a text whatsoever. Just a very simple rotations, very simple bevel, and very crazy simple uh, materials here. Nothing crazy at all. Just literally color, diffusion, reflection, and that's it. That's all I have there. So I'm gonna render this thing out, and we're gonna see you guys in a second. Okay, our very simple render is all rendered out. I have it within Photoshop. So this is pretty much how it came out. Very simple, like I said, nothing crazy. Nice little simple reflection, and it looks pretty good. And I'm very satisfied with it because it's a very simple one, and it looks good. So uh, once again, I just show you guys what this looks like once again, and then we're gonna try to replicate this as close as we can. Um, so uh, yeah, and also like I said already, I I do have uh, the background already set in here, which is gonna be this. Uh, if you guys want to like it, I'm mostly gonna put the stocks in the uh, description down below right now Like as you guys are watching it already be there not a secret download So I'm gonna be using this one right here. And I'm gonna sort of like moving it up. All right, pretty much what I did was just so you know Is this is the one that I used right and I sort of just made this incredibly big That way it kind of just shows this only that's exactly what I did so that's all I have as this background here so uh, yeah, we're gonna start off with let's just start off with the seaweed because why not? Uh, let's go ahead and press enter. A lot of you guys like this trick. If you guys not know it already, once again, I'm going to quickly show you guys the masking tools I'm going to be racing. So pretty much, if you have your brush selected, um, black is how you're going to erase. And then white, you can sort of like bring it back in. So if, if whatever reason you want to erase like this or whatever, or you know, whatever you want to erase. And if you just want to color it back in, if you don't want to have to go all the way back or something like that, or redo it, that's how you do it. Also, people liked how you do select color range to select a color. Let's just say without using, um, without using, what do you call it? The magic wand tool, you can use color range. Select the color like, like white that's here. Press OK. And that, oops, I should probably select it while on the actual, uh, make sure you select it on the, uh, this actual thumbnail, not the actual select, uh, masking tool thumbnail. So pretty much you go to select, right? Color range. Click on white. Press OK. Then you can go back to here. And then you can take your brush even, go to your, go to your black and erase like that. Or if you just want to press uh, Alt Backspace, since that is going to be your black where your foreground is. And that's what you got to do, just to quickly erase it just like so. So all the white is now gone within the actual picture. And it looks really good. Besides this right here, so I'm going to quickly like fix that. So boom. Let's go ahead and fix that. Not sure why I didn't erase the sides, but whatever. Not a hard fix. And then why not? Let's just take our brush and erase that little thing right there because that's annoying the hell out of me. Boom. All right, cool. So, we're going to just drag this thing down, and of course up here, right? There we go. So, we're going to just drag this thing down, and we're going to say, let's just say, like, right here. To have a little seaweed just, like, kind of, like, right there. Um, Let's see what happens if we make it just a little bit more smaller. Like, a little smaller, sort of move it like that. Uh, a little bigger. Okay, so really what I'm trying to do is kind of like make a way so that I can, uh, in the future, or what I'm going to do in a second, is sort of erase uh, something like right here maybe, and like maybe make this go behind the actual text. And what I'm going to do that is, uh, pretty much what you want to do is you want to select the uh, thumbnail of your actual render. So hold control, select the thumbnail, it brings this up for you guys. Now before you do that as well, I might have to just make sure I put a uh, masking on this one here. And a masking on, I already have a masking on here. So, pretty much what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and control click my thumbnail for, or excuse me, control click my thumbnail for the actual render, select my keyweed uh, masking thumbnail, take my brush, make it a hardness at a 100 brush, a nice big size brush. I'm gonna use black, and I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna erase, oops, I don't wanna erase that over there. I'm gonna erase this, so that looks like it's going behind it. <laughs> And then we're going to erase maybe, let's erase this so it looks like it's going behind it. And then why not this so it looks like it's going behind it. So as you can see now, you sort of have this kind of like depth thing where this looks like it's behind this. This is in front, this is in front, this is behind, this is behind it. So you kind of have like the whole feel that the actual text is actually within the actual picture and with actually your, in your scene. And it looks really good, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just take, um, we'll just take no another one in here really quickly. And I'll just quickly uh, make sure I select it uh, with color range so I can get rid of the white here. And if it does that whole thing where I gotta erase more than whatever. Yeah, it does, whatever. Oh god. Alright, take my brush and erase it. Okay. 
All right, so with these other ones, all I'm going to pretty much be doing is uh, I'm just going to move them like slightly around so some of them are higher than others. And if you guys want to change the rotation of it, maybe you just want to flip it on a, a horizontal so it's not the same exact. So something like that, right? And if you guys really want to, you can click on maybe like this one right here and erase a couple of the actual leaves here. It all depends on what you guys really want to do and how much time you want to take on your scene, of course. And realistically, you shouldn't be really rushing. Just have a little fun with it. Like mine took me maybe like 45 minutes to just kind of, kind of get the whole gist of what I wanted to do. Um, this is still bothering me. I don't know why this like thing is there, but geez, can you go away? There we go. All right, sweet. So just take one over here. Why not? And let's make sure. I don't know why that keeps like the, the freaking outline of this is bothering the hell out of me, but not a hard fix using my brush and just erasing with the black. And we're going to simply, let's just take this and move that like right there. And let's just say for the sake of the video that this is pretty good. I want to move this one down a little bit though. Um, that this is pretty good. And then really quickly, what I might just go ahead and do is on the, on the sides ones, these two sides, not these two, these two right here, this one's on the uh, left and right sides. I'm going to pretty much make a duplicate of them. I'm going to flip this on the other horizontal so it's not the same exact orientation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simply go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're just going to blur this at about, make sure we're selected on the actual thing here because that always happens. Blur, Gaussian Blur. Let's go to like three pixels or so, maybe even two. Two is pretty okay. And if you really want to, you can even make the size of this a little bit more bigger than all the other ones. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe we can make it the blur a little bit more. Something like four. Let's just go with three. Okay, we'll go with three. All right, cool. So, on this little three, we're just going to rotate it just a little bit more. And so we're going to have a blur one over here. And let's put a blur one over here as well. Make sure it's in front of those. And if we really want to, I want to get rid of these because, you know, why not? There we go. So now we got two blurs on each side. We have a little bit of seaweed on the bottom. And now I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some coral in here because why the hell not? And the same thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a nice little symbol selection. And then we're going to go ahead or masking selection. So color range, click on white. Oh, God, I got to keep remember to click on the actual thing. I don't know why I'm forgetting all of a sudden. Color range, click on the white. And then all backspace. There we go. And then just get rid of this silly little white outline that's going to continuously be there. And if I want to, I'll make this one pretty big in size. I'll make the other one maybe smaller. I'm going to put this, of course, behind everything, including the render. So I'm going to make this one a little more smaller in size. Kind of have something like that. And we'll say that's pretty okay. Okay, cool. So now I have something like this. It looks pretty good so far. We're starting to like kind of create a scene. I was going to add all my stocks in right now so that we have very simple things to come up next, right? And I'm going to add this hammerhead shark. And I'm going to put this above everything. I'm going to shrink this down in size. Not so much. I kind of want his tail to be in the kind of view here. Because what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make sure that the tail looks like it's maybe in mm, behind it or in front of it. Which one do you guys think? I think it might. It should probably like let's make this go in front. And let's make this go in behind. So you guys know what to do, right? Control click on the render. And then select your hammerhead shark. Make sure, before you do that, make sure you select your actual uh, selection here. Then control click on the actual render here. Your brush, black brush, erase it. Now that looks like it's behind it. And that looks like it's in front of it. So that looks pretty good now, right? So we're kind of like in the way of where we sort of have everything we need it to be. And right now I'm going to do some really quickly simple things. Take a nice little white brush. A white soft brush. Zero hardness, click one time on the top here. Okay. And now what we're going to do here as well is we're going to make another brush hit. We're going to change it to blue. So somewhere you can probably just hold alt and select the blue you have for your water, whatever color you have for the actual text here. I would recommend blue, by the way. Um, and sort of click a couple times, just like so. And then we're going to use linear dodge add. And then we're going to lower the opacity down a little bit. So now we're starting to get a little bit of a... Kind of a shine going on here. I do like how that looks. Let's erase this because we don't need that light over there. And what I might do as well is right before I do my actual brightness and contrast, I'm going to go ahead and do color range. So color range, where are you? Or is it is color balance or color range? I believe it's color balance. What am I talking about? Color balance. And we're going to go ahead and just move around some stuff and see what we kind of got here. Let's go ahead and make our blues a little more bluer. Let's see. Should we get a little red in here? Uh, I mean, that looks pretty good. 
right? A little better, right? Kind of like kind of have a little almost like a water kind of filter on it. Let's go ahead and add some brightness and contrast now. So let's just go negative positive for a second and then we'll just slowly bring up the brightness up with the contrast and then we'll see how that looks. It's looking pretty good. I'm definitely down. It's not bad whatsoever. Okay. Okay. That looks good. So right at this moment in time, you're probably wondering like what we're going to do next. It's sort of, sort of like balancing. We're so I'm going to really quickly, I'm going to throw in some fills. So I'm going to copy the entire thing, control J, then control E to merge it all together. We're going to first do some simple little blur, Gaussian blur, right? And then we're going to use, of course, our selection. We're going to use a black brush, soft brush, and we're going to sort of erase some things just like so. We already know that we want to actually have like around this area here, pretty much a little out of focus. So if you just quickly just look at the bottom area here, you see how the blur is kind of like blurring in a little bit more. That way you kind of have these out of focus. It doesn't look incredibly awkward or whatever like that. So at this very moment, I'm going to continuous, I'm going to actually make another brush hit now. We're going to select this little pink here that we have. Maybe like click over there. Maybe select this green, click over here. Select this yellow, click there. Maybe select this purple, click there. Select this green, click here. Sort of like a balance of colors, right? And then just change the linear dodge add and then sort of lower the opacity down a little bit trying to get more color down here right and if you guys want to just take your eraser if you don't want light in a certain area just sort of erase it of course i don't want light like over here is either um okay okay so at this very moment why not just add my little bubbles that i had over here i believe it was this stock here and i believe what i did was i sort of erased all of this so what i did was i used this I use my black brush. We'll just make it 100 hardness for now and erase all these other ones. I just want the right hand side ones, right? Okay. And now what I did was I made it a little more bigger. And we're gonna simply hold Alt and then drag it over. It'll make a nice little copy for us, just like so. And then these little white bubbles here, I'm just gonna simply go on each one of them and erase a couple of them because I don't actually want them there because it kind of makes it look really awkward. Looks a little too cartoony for me if that makes any sense. Let's go ahead and erase those there and then erase these. So there we go. Also, I did miss a couple spots for that one and those. And then for that there, maybe it could go. Maybe it could, that one can stay. Why not? All right, cool. So now we kind of have exactly what we have before. So we kind of have like the cool little water thing. Now remind yourselves that you can do whatever the hell you want for your underwater scene. I'm just gonna, I'm trying to give you like almost like a heads up what you can do or what you're looking for. So realistically what I'm looking for here is to make sure I, I place my text in an area where I have a zone or this very simple text structure, right? It's nothing crazy, nothing hard. But what I did was I left space for me. I left sort of like a depth to actually work with because I put my R or excuse me, I put my under to the left, right, rotated to the left. I put my water rotated to the right hand side. So it gave me some space here. It also gave you some space to put stuff behind it. So that's why I kind of have these two things going in, in between and stuff. So if you have even more, if you have like, I don't know, like a broad spectrum with like plants you want to have in your water, why not just put them in there and sort of like do what I did for this seaweed here. And then it just, it sort of expands from there, right? So what I'm going to do exactly is water has movement in it. So I'm going to also add, besides Gaussian blur, I'm going to add motion blur. So I'm going to go ahead and control J, control E, everything in together, motion blur. And we're gonna add a very simple 20 pixels, zero angle motion blur in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, of course, use my selection mask here, black brush, black soft brush. And we're gonna go under this water here and we're gonna sort of make sure that we have a little bit of motion going on. Now, I don't want too much motion on the text, but however, I will put some there because it is moving. Let's just say it's moving down. This coral there can have a bit of motion or seaweed, not coral, wrong word. And of course, the shark here is actually in motion. So for the fins, I'm going to leave them pretty like blurred out because, oops, I, I should fix this one. This one should be a little blurred, right? That's the magic of having your brush be your eraser. Okay, and right now that looks pretty, that looks way better, right? So sort of, you sort of have a little bit of motion going on. It looks 10 times better in my opinion. And then we're sort of like in the zone where we're pretty much done at this very moment in time. You should probably be putting some other lighting effects in. So I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very simple white soft brush. And we're gonna pretty much just do something like this, right? And then we're gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna blur this out until all this sort of combines, just like so, perfect. Now, if you want to change this into a color and not just put it on overlay or something like that, overlay looks pretty good in this situation, 
But just in case you want to change it to a color, I'm going to make a duplicate of this really quickly so I don't mess with that, around with that one. But Control U, right, to bring up the hue and saturation on your brush. Click on the word Colorize, lower your brightness down, and then put your saturation up. And you get a color. So you just rotate your hue and saturation here. You can get a color besides actually using it on overlay. But that's, of course, if you really want to. If you don't want to, if you don't want to flirt with this, it's fine. I, myself, am just going to put it on a nice, uh, keep it on my white brush. And then just change my blend mode from normal to overlay. And I'm pretty much just going to call it a day. I think I might, I feel like, I feel like it's necessary. But it's probably not. But Garage Blur is calling for me again. Two pixels. Take my selection mask. Black brush. And let's just gauge and blur a couple spots around because why the hell not? Right? There we go. I think this is definitely very satisfying looking. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as I said again in the beginning of this video, sorry for not posting it on Friday, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just saying I was just studying and you know stuff like that. You guys know. So if we could have let's please try to go for that 300 likes of course but however two likes on the video equals a secret down below. Thank you guys so freaking much for watching. Thank you guys so much for really enjoying the manipulation series. It's been a little bit it's been a fun for me. I I pretty much do maybe I'll do like one more or something like that and then sort of like you know kinda it would fade away a little bit and then probably come back. Or I don't know maybe I'm falling in love with it and maybe my channel will start you know having more manipulation stuff. However it was a challenge set by you guys and to for me to do and of course I'm trying to do it as best as I can so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video here today as well and I will talk to you guys later so, so HQ out peace don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys and have a wonderful weekend talk to you guys later later <laughs> talk to you guys later later